We're starting off by talking about this YouTube alleged scammer that recently had a lot of information exposed. Theft? Girl, you have three DUIs. Hurting the elderly? I have nothing to hide. Oh my God! Girl, what? But I kind of just want to walk you guys through like how, how did we even get here? So here's her first video. Living in my car, homeless in California, first vlog. It's got over 2 million views. The girl in the thumbnail is very pretty and I talk about this all the time. The reason why we're so confused here, our brain doesn't process is because people are like, well, she's pretty and she looks like she's a nice girl. Let me ask you this. What does a nice girl look like? I am just so over us excusing people because they're attractive and getting the, giving them the benefit of the doubt because they're attractive. Let's, let's just see some of this. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Uh, my name is Ariana and I am homeless. I will be at 32 this Monday, the 25th of July. I am so annoyed by this because I know there are some people that watch this video and they said, well, how did this beautiful young woman become homeless? It must have been a mistake. There's no way. She's just too pretty to be home. Like, what does that mean? What does a nice girl look like? How can we truly judge the character of a person based on the way they dress or look or, or, or anything? It's just crazy. But the amount of sympathy and the outpouring of sympathy for her, because honestly, it's, it's, it's just because she's pretty. I won't be celebrating. <laughs> um, I don't have any family or friends. I do oh, not. and now... Now, here come the rescuers. Oh, there are so many people in this world. And look, it's me. I've still got a little bit of a fixer in me. There are people that have low self-worth, right? And they, and it's unfortunate. The world did that to you. It's not your fault, okay? And so they find their value in helping others. And then when others are grateful, they feel like they're worth something. Fun fact about Voodoo Larry. Can't conjure a thing for myself. When in reality, we should just be working on loving ourselves. I know it's like so, you know, generic or whatever. So the minute that she says, I'm homeless, I don't have any friends or family, the fixers are going to come running. They can save her. She's vulnerable. They expect that she's going to accept their help and they're going to feel great because they're providing and now she's happy and we've saved this pretty little broken bird. The fixers are coming. I have a full-time job and I live in my car, and I have lived in my car for the last seven months now. There's that. <laughs> um, it's lonely. It's definitely lonely. And also, let me just say this. If you are, if you're operating as a fixer, it might feel good sometimes in the moment, but do not forget, you are putting your self-worth in the hands of somebody else. And if that person is irresponsible, like Ari, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, who did you just give your self-worth to? And trust me, I'm talking to myself right now, I just have flashbacks. <laughs> but I am also a very introverted person, so it's only lonely occasionally. I'm, I'm so shy, I'm, I'm so sweet. enjoying it because I have all this freedom and solitude and just I make my own rules and I'm not bound to a mortgage. I hope more people will say something about wanting to take her side because I'm about to blow the fucking lid off of this whole case. <laughs> this girl's a piece of shit. She's a piece of shit. Just so there's a lot of upsides to it, but I'm not gonna lie, it, it gets difficult. I mean, this, this is my home. This is where I live, that's where I sleep. <sighs> The weed flag. Yeah. I could go into my story of how I got here, but I think I want to save that for another video. The reason why I actually wanted to post a video was because I have been feeling pretty down lately this last month about my situation, just kind of in my own head, thinking a lot of negative thoughts, rethinking my life. Okay. And Good. I got on YouTube and I started out searching for videos on depression. Okay, so you guys kind of get a little gist of it, right? Very sweet girl. 
just, you know, caught up in a bad situation, doesn't have any friends or family to help her. You know, she just needs a helping hand, right? Oh my God, beware. Beware of being a fixer. But let's hear a little bit more from her before I tell you guys what's recently come out. So a lot of people in the comments of her first video were offering to help her, offering her room and board, asking her where they could donate money and I mean, the girl was getting hundreds of dollars off that first video. Not to mention, within only a couple of weeks, the video blew up to 2.2 million views. That could easily be $10,000. If you were homeless and given $10,000, and my God, YouTube pays out in about 30 days. I don't think you're homeless anymore. You got, you can start putting it back together. But everyone wanted to know, what happened? What happened, Ari? How did this... Well, how did we get here? So here's her response to that. Melons, I'm back. Wait, what does she say? What you doing, watermelons? Oh, oh she's so back. Sweet. Okay, so you guys wanted to know how I got here. I want to know how I got here. You know. What we're going to do is we're going to hear Ari's side of the story, because I actually haven't seen this whole video yet. I just saw snippets of it, and then I'm going to... We're going to pull up the court documents. It's still not all that easy to talk about, so I'm not going to go into detail, but I'm going to give you the gist of it. I was born in Ventura, California. Okay. At the age of three, I moved to Arkansas, and I lived all my life out there. And then last year, I moved back out here. And the reason I moved out here Mm -hmm. I had to leave the relationship that I was in. I had to leave f for my safety. <gasps> it got so bad that my coworkers were telling me, if you don't get out of here, we're going to see your face on the news. Oh my, I didn't know she said that. This, she put this video out before she got exposed. So this is her version of events. Let's keep it going. My only option at the time on such short notice was California. I didn't have a plan. I just knew that I needed to get somewhere safe and I was gonna figure it out after I made it here. He was starting to sense that something was up. I left everything behind. I didn't bring anything with me. I didn't have time. If you guys didn't know that there's a turn in this story, one in the chat, if something about this seems a little off and you might've been skeptical, two in the chat, if you probably would've taken this at face value. I would've, honestly, I think I would've been a one. There's something about the cuts in here. There's something about the long pauses that it feels like she's trying to find a roundabout way to make sense of what actually happened. It's something sketchy. I never would have called it out. Wouldn't have looked deeper into it, but I, I would have just had a little question mark over it. All my furniture, all of my belongings, I just had to wipe my hands of them. It was my belongings or it was my life. I can't. I wanted to watch a little bit more of these videos to kind of set the foundation, but you guys get the gist of what people were hearing. You know, this poor girl is in danger, you know? Now, let me just open a few things up here. Open up my briefcase. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I know it sounds like I'm like hyping it up right now, but like I just, I, 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 alrighty. Let's go, boy. I can't, I can't believe. Okay, wait, let me just make sure I've got everything opened up. Nice girl, right? Allie's name is actually not Allie. Her name is Ronnie Spur. That's very obvious given all of these arrest images from a couple years ago. Here's her smiling in one mugshot. Here's, I don't know, just another one. Clearly we are on a different day here. Wow, okay, what a victim. But what did she do? Should we start with this one? Should we look at this one? Should we look at this one? Or should we look at this one? Well, <laughs> we'll start with the first. See, this is what a fake victim looks like. Uh, okay, so we've got a lot of, got a lot of just, you know, license, driving, stuff like that, violations. Oh my God, theft of property. <laughs> what, she went to jail for property theft? 
driving on a suspended license. Suspended license because she had a DUI prior to this. A uh, failure to appear in court. Wow, real nice girl here. Driving under the influence. Careless and prohibited driving. I mean, she's got a little, a little bit of a little bit of a rap sheet, but that's just where we're starting. Her relationship didn't end because she was in an abusive relationship. Her relationship ended when her boyfriend started petitioning for custody of their child when they found him with fractures on him and a brain bleed. Okay, but Just let it soak in. So here is Aaron Weaver, who I believe is the father of the child, who started to petition for custody. God, I'm gonna throw up. I'm like actually gonna throw up. The male child was born to the defendant on October 28, 2013. The parties had been amicably operating in a shared parenting schedule since the birth of the child at which time their relationship was severed due to the defendant that's should we call her ronnie or Allie? let's call her let's call her Allie because that's what she likes to be called okay nah fuck that it's ronnie ronnie's irresponsible attitude and actions the defendant had been residing with her parents until about three weeks ago at which time she got into an altercation with her mother and threatened to physically harm her resulting in the defendant being asked to leave the residence oh my gosh i'm just thinking back to that clip where she said i don't have any family or friends oh, her parents let her move back in at the age of 23. And in return, she threatened their lives, according to these documents. The plaintiff's work schedule is such that he works for two weeks. So that's the dude. Then is home for one week. And during the time that he was gone, the defendant would leave the child with either his parents or her parents most of the time. So she's just leaving the kid. The defendant's father has concern about the care of the baby. The defendant would leave the baby with them and stay gone for days without either he or his wife knowing her whereabouts or having any way to contact her in the event of emergency. While her ex-boyfriend or whatever was out working for two weeks, she would drop the kid off at his parent at either grandparent's house and just leave. You know who else did that? Casey Anthony. That since leaving her parents' residence, the defendant had taken up residence with a person whom she is not married to named Drew Smith, who appears from public records to be an unsavory character who has been convicted of several offenses ranging from class A misdemeanors, uh, theft, to several driving, uh, sorry, several driving offenses, blah, 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 blah disrespect for the elderly infirm being ticketed two times in the space of one week yo here's the thing having traffic violations on your record it's not something that i'm like well you know th this person's a horrible person i think i probably had a speeding thing when i was when i was like 18 or 19 or something and you know sometimes we just can't get that inspection sticker changed okay <laughs> like, i get it but if you have six or seven traffic violations, theft, hurting the elderly, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Paint a picture of me about your character, okay? Who in here has a traffic violations but isn't hurting elders and robbing people? I just wanna be clear. The defendant has a history of instability and a, to the best of the plaintiff's knowledge has been hospitalized for mental health issues, has attempted suicide in the past resulting in scars on her wrist and has held a gun to her head threatening suicide. Now, working through mental health issues. Okay, acting like we don't have mental health issues and taking it out on the people around us and putting our child at risk, not okay. Ronnie told her ex-boyfriend that she intends to travel to Tunica for a small vacation with her new boyfriend and the infant during the week that the plaintiff is supposed to have the child and leave the child at a casino facility while she and Mr. Smith party. I will make fun of this girl all day all day y'all know i be getting pissed off about this stuff sometimes now you now you and i know this right we, we've just read these documents <laughs> but let's go back let's go back to a period of time where nobody knew that Allie was ronnie nobody had dug that much into her past and found all of this stuff let's go back in time come on here and explain a little more in detail what happened when I got out here to California, as far as like the family goes, because I understand that my video was very vague um, and it was meant to be that way. I wanted to just give like an outline kind of of what happened, but the feedback is kind of letting me know like, hey, we don't really understand this part. 
So this is for my, oh my subscribers, God. the people that love me and support me. That's not us. <laughs> Something about seeing somebody lie before they get exposed just because we know we know the secret, right? We need to look at this before. I haven't read this one yet. Before Ronnie tells us about her family. This is a affidavit from her father. I, Ronald Spur, age 74, father of Ronnie Spur, age 23, hereby state under oath as follows. I have concerns about my grandson. Ronnie Spur is my granddaughter who I adopted at age two. Ronnie has always lived with my wife, her adopted mother, and Spur. And now since then. I love my daughter very much and I know that she loves her baby and means well, but she is just not very responsible when it comes to the baby's care. After the baby was born, Ronnie has, on at least three occasions, in my opinion, acted irresponsibly regarding the care of the baby. Ronnie would simply leave the baby with us and stay gone for a few days without either of us knowing where she was or have any way to contact her in case of emergency. Recently, Ronnie and her mother and my wife had an argument and Ronnie cursed and threatened my wife. I believe the threat was that she would slap her effing face. I was present when this happened. This scared my wife and Ronnie was asked to leave our home and we changed the locks to our home. Now, saying I'm gonna, you know, fucking slap you, I actually, no, that's, that's pretty bad, but it seems like it didn't quite happen, but these are 74 year old people. If she was so enraged that they locked the doors, or they changed the locks on the home. I don't know if Ronnie is fit to raise the child right now. Ronnie, a few days later, came in through the garage by using the garage door opener out of my truck, which she knew the combination to. She left again when requested. I know that this will be presented in a custody case and swear that the statements are true and correct, though it distresses me to make them. I don't think he wants to throw Ronnie under the bus, but I think that he's concerned that she's not okay. I'm scheduled for triple bypass heart surgery on the 10th day of January and need my thoughts known now. Wait, this was in 2014. Is he still alive? If he's passed away and she slanders him in this video just because she was try he was trying to protect the child. What are you the gonna say, Ronnie? people love me and support me, this is for you because I feel like you deserve more detail. You know, what actually went on because I mean, after all, this is all in with Ari, and I don't want to leave anything out. I have nothing to hide. Um, uh, it's just, it, it's a difficult thing for me to talk about, that's all. Um, but just to elaborate a little bit more, I'll just go ahead and cut right into it. One of the relatives that I stayed with, um, that I spoke about, was my I dad. I can't believe this! Um, it was, to be exact, it was my dad and his parents, so my grandparents. Um, he lives with them in this big house. And whenever I was trying to escape the situation, I escape. called my dad, whom I- You broke into the house! Only kept in touch with like a little bit. Uh, me and him were like off and on talking since I had met him whenever I was 19. Um, our communication was just very spotty. Uh, it was always just like, you know, checking up on each other, seeing how you're doing. Okay, good, great, bye. <laughs> My dad's a very free spirit. I don't think she's talking about her real dad. I don't believe a word out of her mouth. I don't know if she's full on lying. None of this makes sense. I don't want to say like a lot of negative. I really don't, but- You he are is, though. He's about himself, you know? He has a lot of kids and some of the kids he hasn't even met yet. So I'll just leave that there. <laughs> But he has a good heart. He's just a little selfish, to be honest. So I reached out to him. I told him the situation, and I said, "But you're you a liar." To say, do you have an apartment out there? Can I come? I, I just need somewhere to go. And he said, "No, uh, I'm staying with mom and dad. Um, I just moved back out here from Arizona. But yeah, come, and we'll figure it out." He's like, "I don't know how mom's going to take it. You know how she is. Like she's not going to want anybody here." Um, and I said, I totally understand. Like, I'll figure it out when I get there. And he was like pressing. He was like, come on, come on, like get out here. Like you need to be safe. I'm worried about you. My grandpa knew that I was coming and he just didn't tell my grandmother. To hmm, my grandpa. give you a little background on my grandmother. She's not a nice person. There's like a very small circle of people that she likes, but 
She doesn't like newcomers. She doesn't like anyone to steal the spotlight from her. She's just not a friendly person. Like if you ask most people, she's kind of known to be like just mean, <laughs> but she is of Spanish descent. So she is a little aggressive and they tend to be a little What? Just let me also put into perspective, because like I know I got I got a lot of black viewers too, and very often uh, people like to paint sometimes us as aggressive black women. Imagine if somebody said, um, "Well, and my grandma's black, so she's a little aggressive." What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Ari, you just lost you just lost everybody, baby. She is a little aggressive, and they tend to be a little aggressive sometimes. They tend to be uh, aggressive. What the fuck? My dad actually snuck me into the house for like, oh gosh, I don't even know, probably like the first couple months. Um, <laughs> I stayed in the downstairs. It's such a big house. It's like, I think it's like over 4,000 square feet, uh, something like that. But so I stayed down like in a den area, like uh, in a bedroom downstairs. And she can't go downstairs because of health issues. So. <laughs> Ari, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. We've heard of her living with her parents at 23 after the baby. We've heard of her living with her new boyfriend, Mr. Smith, in the court documents. We've heard of her apparently now being snuck into possibly her biological dad's house. We've heard of her living in the car. Ari. It's been eight years. Get a fucking job. She can walk into any restaurant in the city and they will hire her as a server and she will make a good 50 to $100 a day. Get a job and then get a roommate. Something is wrong. My dad would just sneak me in and out and- Oh my God. It didn't take me long to find a job. Um, so I would go to work and then I'd come in, I'd sneak in at night. <laughs> and that kind of just went on. I mean, we were just tiptoeing around just until I could get on my feet. It got to the point She never did. <laughs> Surprise, she never got on her feet. She was having a really good day, a little more lighthearted. So my dad kind of just <laughs> said, hey, like my daughter's here and she needs a place to stay. She's coming from like a really bad relationship. That's um, not true. Like the guy is crazy, tried to kill her, all this stuff. That's not true. You yeah. probably tried to kill him. It's a big red flag to me that the ex-boyfriend was fighting for custody and fighting these emergency, filing these emergency orders. He was responsible enough to get a lawyer. He's had a good job for a while and she was just leaving the baby at the grandparents' house. And so you're gonna tell me that she was the victim in the situation? <laughs> she was like, okay, well, how long is she staying, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I was working, I was working full time and I was saving up all of my money. No, you weren't. I was also making jewelry and selling it at the beach. She's so sweet. She makes jewelry and sells it at the beach. No, she doesn't. That's one of those little nuggets that somebody drops in. Jody Arias did the same thing where they want you to believe that they're just a sweet girl. Let me ask you something. How many times have you been to the beach? Have you ever seen anyone selling jewelry at the beach? She probably maybe did this one time. That's maybe where she got the idea. This is not a regular occurrence. She just said it because it makes her sound very sweet and innocent. She did say, you know, you don't need to spend your money uh, on an apartment, just stay here. I was like, even like, no, that's okay. Like I can work and I can save up enough and I, I can get a place. That's like, not I what you said. Wanting to get None of this more, happened. Way more sooner um, than what I did, but they were adamant about me staying. They were like, no, you're not gonna be on the streets. Like we're, we're gonna, we're gonna let you stay here. And it, it was, I was told all of these things. Nobody wanted her in the house because she's volatile. Like she's very volatile and she has emotional problems. Let me just talk to this. It is normal to sometimes be a highly emotional person. It is normal to sometimes have outbursts. Sometimes it's even normal to be angry. Okay, if you are a person that has these expressions of anger that maybe sometimes push others away, the best thing you can do for yourself is acknowledging that that's what you do. Accepting that you are hurting people with your behavior, even though maybe you can't control it in the moment. But splitting 
into the bad version of you where you're hanging out with your crackhead boyfriend and, you know, getting DUIs every other day and getting drunk all the time and leaving your child while you go to a casino. And then this other part of you where you're like, no, I'm just a nice girl and my mom's not very nice and I sell, I sell seashells on the beach. She has split between these two. And in between it, there is a great wall of denial. She alternates between these two versions of herself. And that's why she's able to speak so confidently about this sweet version of herself. If you are a person like this, it's okay. It's normal. You're a product of your environment. But the best thing that you can do is knock down that wall of denial and merge those two people and heal the bad side of you which Ronnie refuses to do. She would rather sit in the world where she's a good person. She's lying to herself for self-preservation. Like, be involved, and I'm talking they are involved. <laughs> they are like big time members of the club and they customize cars, which is way cool. I love that, but it's just not what I wanted to do. I was out there in California and I was always at the beach and I was trying to make peace with what happened in Arkansas I was trying to just find myself again um I and you know they like to to drink and party and <clears throat> so do you you like to drink and party if you're one of those people or you're around those people that have that big wall of denial and you kind of split between your bad self and your good self when you drink that bad self comes out full force and there's nothing you can do about it when he drinks he changes oh that's just his true nature coming out. When you're inebriated, you can no longer deny and you're just on full display. That shadow self that you have, it's on full display and other people see it. And then they wake up in the morning and they're like, well, that didn't happen. Let's move on. I don't remember that. So that means it's not my fault. And everyone's like, oh my God, who are you? In, in this version of herself, she doesn't even think she's a drinker. Girl, you have three DUIs. But I was never disrespectful about it. I was very respectful. I just, you know, I was just distant. She's so respectful. And as time went on, I guess they started like noticing like, why isn't she involving herself with all this stuff? Drinking? Like, you were drinking! She coming to these events. You were and, drinking! And all the while, all of this was happening, I did pay rent. Like, I was paying rent. I was cleaning up around the house. I was cooking. I, I don't believe that. Her oh my god, this is so embarrassing that she said all of that and people found the court documents. She She's the kind of person who likes to gossip and she, it's like everyone she talked about, she didn't have anything nice to say. I think she was probably projecting about the alcohol stuff and now she might even be projecting about this. She might be a little shit talker. Uh, my grandfather, my dad, they were all saying, like, what is going on with her? Like, she's losing her mind. That's what they were she saying about remember, you, girl. Um, what she just ate. She doesn't know what day it is. Uh, she didn't even know who I was at one point. She thought I was somebody else. And... Nata said she's just talking about herself in third person. <laughs> I mean, she really is, dude. Keep in mind, too, my dad was a hellion. He put her through so much shit growing up, and so did all of her other kids. So naturally she's gonna be skeptical about me and i totally understand that um so but I, I i think it got to a point where she just completely thought i was somebody else because she was like accusing me of doing things that i was like what <laughs> what, what? what she started getting really bitter and locking herself in her room she wouldn't talk to anybody uh she wouldn't talk to me my dad uh my grandfather her kids any but like she just would sit in her room and stew on the negative and she would just be so miserable. Like she was so miserable and she was so mean to my grandfather, like driving him like a slave basically. Like, I mean, I know what she meant. I just didn't like it after the Hispanic comment. To kind of also give you a little bit more detail of what kind of person she is. Oh, here we go. My aunt and uncle, well, my uncle, he's passed. I actually never met him, but he was gay and my aunt's gay. <laughs> Hold on, let me just dial it back. <laughs> the hard pause. Well, my uncle, he's passed. I actually never met him, but he was gay. And my aunt's gay. And she, at one point in their lives, like, for a while, like, years, shunned them and called them- Oh, oh my God! Girl, what the fuck? <laughs> 
one night she was like, I, uh, she was screaming at my dad saying, I want her the hell out of my house, get her the fuck out of my house. Um, and then when I heard her screaming, I was like, oh gosh, here we go. She had threatened me. She said that if you don't get out of my house, I have, what are you gonna say next? I have two girls right now I can call up to come and, and take care of you and drag your ass. Two girls? Drag your ass where? Do I need to mute her for a second? What is she about to say? I don't know what's next. Your ass out of this house or something like that. And I was like, whoa. I was Whoa. just like so... Whoa, I'm Ronnie and I'm innocent. What? Well, also, when you guys are hearing this, doesn't this story kind of not make any sense? Like, this is 12 minutes of her being the victim and explaining how she's the victim while casually dropping slurs and throwing her entire family under the bus. The same family that she threatened to slap uh, broke into the house when they changed the locks and uh, was they were trying to rescue her child who she was neglecting. Guys, when we opened this case file, I did not expect this. My dad chimed in and, and he he's very chill. He's a chill person, but he went off. He was like, what the F is your problem, mom? What do you have against her? She is the nicest person. No, you're There's not. Nothing wrong. No, you're not. Like, that, okay, period. Boom, right there. Blatant fucking lie. Ronnie has problems and she has mental problems that she needs to accept and address and, and work through. You can work through emotional problems, but you can't work through it if you're lying about yourself to yourself and everyone around you, okay? I say this as somebody who in their early 20s was a loose cannon. I also, I think I told you guys this, I have been sober now for quite a bit because I realized I wasn't a very nice person when I was drunk. And I denied it for so, so, so long because it hurt me too much to feel like I wasn't a nice person. Because when I'm sober, I feel like I was pretty, you know, up and down, up and down in my 20s. But the best thing, the best thing that I did for myself was not minimizing the harm that I caused or bad things I said or did. And instead, feeling that shame and feeling that remorse. Not letting me lie to myself. Like, that's what changed me. And that's all this girl needs to do. Like, that's it. it. It's scary, but it's really not that hard. And he even said, like, is it because she's young and beautiful and you're not anymore? <gasps> I was like, oh God. That's what, she, that's what she's thinking about herself. This girl is a piece of work. She is a woman who's kind of stuck in the past and she hates being old. She wishes. She's just she's roasting her. About it too. She wishes that she was young and beautiful again. It's giving Jody. She had that kind of mentality and that she didn't have peace um, within herself that that really, it was disturbing. I'm the nicest person ever. I'm the nicest. Everyone was drinking and smoking around me. I didn't want to participate in that. And my mom was jealous of me because um, I'm so, I, she's an old school and she's not young and beautiful anymore. Jody 2.0. Get the F out of my house. So, I mean, I didn't fight her. Um, and that's how I got to the point of sleeping in my car outside of their house. Now, I wasn't on their property. I noticed a couple people said that I was still on their property, but no, I wasn't. Um, I was on the street of the neighborhood. Um, so they do have a gate. I thought you had a job and you were saving. Let me recap you on a little bit of what kind of happened. So between her first video and this one, people started giving her money. The YouTube video, the viewership that she has on her YouTube videos, she made at least $50,000, which is, <laughs> I was about to say a salary for a whole year, but considering two years ago, I was just making $30,000 a year. That's two fucking salaries. On top of that, with the donations, the girl probably made 50, 60, 70, way more than that. I heard somebody say over 200,000, but ridiculous. So afterwards, Ari, of course, is in her new identity, Ari, is vlogging her life and she's in these nice hotels. You know, it's, it's kind of like a fun moment. Like, oh, she finally has a place to stay. But then she starts talking about getting a new van and she went to the dealership and was complaining because they didn't have any Mercedes vans. A Mercedes van costs about maybe used $35,000. A new one, 50K. She then released this video. 
am I a scammer? Addressing the skepticism. Uh, this person said, she totally proves that a pretty face will get you ahead in life. So many giving donations to Ronnie Spur, AKA Ari, the homeless woman living in her vehicle with a car, job, cell phone, clothes, food, vapes, and staying at the Biltmore Hotel. If you donate after knowing she lost her infant son who had a fractured skull, she only received supervised visits, then I guess you're gullible enough to be played. Ugh! In the heart! Somebody said, I get Jody Arias vibes as well with this person. What is she gonna say to address it? I need you to strap in because we are about to get gaslit. We are about to get swindled. We are about to get manipulated to our very core by a professional victim. Fasten all seatbelts. Seal all entrances and exits. Close all shops in the mall. Cancel the free range circus. Watermelons. All right. It's time to get real. Wait, as I need my fucking manipulation goggles. I need, I need to be protected. It's time to get real. As you all know, I'm sure by now, you have heard of or seen the whole Ari's a scammer uh, uh, news. Uh. <laughs> Where do I begin? Am I a scammer? Am I scamming the people? Short answer, no. no. I'm gonna be real with you guys like I have from day one. I hope this gives peace to the people that want to believe in me, but they're kind of like on the fence, like, uh, is she like scamming us or is she legit? Like, is she genuine? Y you have to understand, I'm very green, okay? Uh, this YouTube thing is all new to me. My yeah. subscribers, the amount of subscribers- Well, lying and cheating ain't, girl. It ain't. You've been doing this for years. Subscribers <laughs> I have is something that I've never seen before or experienced or was even going for in the beginning. Um, when I made this channel, it was on a whim. It was- I raw. need to order a crucifix. It was definitely not premeditated. I was literally sitting in my car one day. I remember I was sitting at the park um, and I was just feeling down like about my whole situation. And so when I started to watch um, videos of people who are in the same situation as me, it uplifted me and it gave me motive and encouragement to put out a video for the people that are going through the same things, but just haven't she was just doing it to it help or haven't she was just, now here we are two minutes in and we haven't addressed the allegations yet let's hello let's get into it sister wanted to talk about it i never had the intentions to gain pity or sympathy from yes. anybody that's not what this was at all you 100 percent wanted empathy and you wanted pity because more pity equals more money it's math science facts it was purely to show others that it doesn't matter what happens to you in life. You can always have a positive outlook on it. You can always make it better. You can always you can split take into what's the given best to you version and of make yourself. the best out of it and still live a very happy life. Whether you believe in God or, or whatever, that's just me personally. She sounds I, like Jody. I put my faith and trust in God. Um, but anybody can make the best out of a not so great situation and that's what I'm doing and I'm letting you guys see that um, I don't claim to be some poor like run down is she gonna respond to so guys this is after people found her court documents they found the things that her grant that her father said uh, the allegations from the baby daddy like the custody battles, the the fractures on the child. Is she gonna address the child being beaten? <laughs> Living on the streets type homeless person that needs people's money. That That's not what this is. That's not what it has ever been about. I never once asked for donations. You didn't I don't have even to. ask people to subscribe to my channel or you like my videos. To. The way I see it, if you wanna subscribe, great if you don't great you know what i mean like people are going to do what they want to do i'm not going to try to persuade you to subscribe to me talk about that it. comes with the territory Sorry, i'm going to start skipping around the other thing here is we've watched three videos so far is she ever going to even mention that she has a child 
she just did all that talking in the last video and never once mentioned her son who would have been about six or seven years old by that time. But the start of it's like people expect me to be down and out every day. Like, yeah, in my first video, I was a little more somber because I was having one of those days. People go through emotions and it's, it would be asinine to believe that if you're down and out one day, that's how you are every other day. I mean, people are happy some days and they're down other days. That's just All right, how let's life get to the most is. Replayed. What's going on here? Let's that's just stuff. not where God's taken me. Um, I was just going in circles with this nine to five and wasn't really even being able to save up that much. I'm not even living off the money that I am making off of YouTube. I am still living off the money that I personally had saved up along nope. with no, you're not. my vacation pay that was- Here's something else. I do not believe that she's living off of a goddamn dime that she saved up. You know why? When you don't have a lot of money, when you don't have a, a large income, your family was never good with money, you don't know a lot about money, it's hard to save. When I was working one of my uh, old jobs, like not too long ago, great salary, great everything. I was making about like $3,500 a month. Could not save a fucking penny. It, it, it's just hard. It, it really is. And so I don't believe that she saved a single fucking dime because she's not making a lot of money and it's difficult to save. So you're sitting here lying to me by saying that you're living off the money that you saved up. And now here's the real question. How is she getting the money that she has before the YouTube money started coming in, before the donations came in? What was she doing for money? She will never ever tell us. I'm probably going to just cut off the, the cash app and that's not what this channel is about. I'm not oh, trying to get donations app. from people. Never asked for them, never will. But I will humbly thank the people that were willing to help me. The people that want to see me get to a better place. Again, I am rewarding the fixers for helping her, making them feel good. That's what that's what fixers want, appreciation. Let's all have an honesty circle. One in the chat if you're a fixer. Two in the chat if you're like a mini fixer, like you like the feeling of it. Three in the chat if you like, you know, you're on your own, bitch. I'm gonna raise my hand as a one here. And I just wanna briefly explain how I became a fixer. I had a family member that was very emotionally dependent on me. And I didn't realize that concept as a child. But when I did something right, this person, parent, okay. When I did something right, this person would be happy. And then when I did something, honestly, when I did nothing or when I did something bad, this person would be very, very disappointed. So from a young age, I put my self-esteem into a parental figure's hands. And once you leave the nest at home, you're still programmed to put your self-worth in someone else's hands. Does that kind of make sense? So if you're a person that's used to fixing things, it's because somebody depended on you to fix them. And now you see that as your role. You see your role as taking care of others' happiness. Some people are comfortable in that role, honestly. I still have a little bit of a fixer in me because I now know how to kind of like help and support and it feels good for me and it's symbiotic for the other person, but I detach when I need to. So you can be a mini fixer, but don't, don't be a one-stop shop, okay? But what I do want to come from my channel is a community. Like I would love to have like just a small community of, of people, people helping who me. like are on the same page as me. People that my want to ultimate donate. goal with all of this. She's like, I just need a hundred of you, just a hundred. And all 100 of you will send me $1,000 per month to sustain my lifestyle. The Biltmore ain't gonna pay for itself. <laughs> and mama needs a new Mercedes van. To help people that are less fortunate, people living on the streets, people living in their vehicles, um, people living a way that they didn't intentionally plan to live or that have no other choice. In the beginning of this, that was me. That was just like me. I didn't have a choice. This was my only option. I've just made the best out of it. And now I'm saving for a van. That's my next step. I stay true to what I said. 
I want to bring awareness to homelessness. My heart cries for the people <laughs> sleeping in the cries. parks. And I was gonna tell you guys, I'm just gonna take it off. YouTube is paying me and I still have money from my vacation pay, so. No, you don't. I'm not rich by any means, but I'm not hurting either. I'm able to live the lifestyle that I wanna live. Oh, to address another thing. <laughs> So yeah, I have lost a few subscribers and that was kind of a bummer, I'm not gonna lie. But on the other hand, a lot of them that dropped like flies left right after I posted that short about me not wanting to date. <laughs> In the same time I was losing subscribers, I was now getting people- Now she's trying to say people unsubscribed because she said she didn't want to date? How much you want to bet that she does have a boyfriend? Like this type of person, probably needs something to attach to. She needs a source. She needs a little narcissistic supply. Like, I'm sure she does have somebody on the side and she's just like, oh, I don't want to date. Yeah, you do. Messaging you me have on somebody. Cash App requesting for a refund for like five or $10, whatever they sent me, which is totally fine. And I am going to go through my Cash App and actually refund everybody that wants their They're money not. back, which I think is just like two or three that I've seen. I really cannot. I think I'm at a point where I can't listen to her lie anymore. This guy said, Geez, read the court document, folks. An infant with a cracked skull is no joking matter. Your own grandparents going to court and requesting that a judge remove a child from the custody of her mother doesn't happen very often. That's so true. How did I, we cover, I covered a hundred cases like a year, over a hundred. I have not really, the one other time that I've heard of grandparents, you know, petitioning for custody was in the Gene Allen case when ultimately the father was murdered. He's right, grandparents do not often, you know, try to take custody back unless there's a real problem. Uh, it's unsalvageable at this point. Ari should double down and upload a video of herself using that Patreon money to buy a Birkin bag. <laughs> That's funny. Wow, time for mama watermelon to pay for child support. You know what? I'm gonna end that one on that note by saying, in retrospect, I think the watermelon part was racist. I'm saying here now, because it was racist. <laughs>